I'm about to show you in my time lapse how I put together the creation of the scene from Waltz and Gromit's A Matter of Loaf and Death. So I was focused on recreating that stop motion feel, creating a complete scene. For Sculpt January, you don't have to go this far, you can pretty much do whatever you want. I'm trying to create full scenes that are uh, textured and lit. You know, to invoke certain moods, I go into solid view, you can see uh, what I have here. And I'm rendering this in cycles, because for claymation you want kind of the charm of, like, natural light. Uh, with Eevee, you're gonna notice uh, things are gonna appear a bit darker, because there's some reflected light off of things. So there's this harsh shadow underneath, and you could resolve that by having more lights, or there are add-ons that um, can sort of fake sort of that light bounce that happens in uh, cycles, but um, it's not going to be as accurate or as natural looking. So yeah, it's kind of horror lighting here, but um, yeah. here you're kind of seeing, you know, what I'm not modeling, so uh, we don't see the top of that bowl there, um, and yeah, there's this bread is one instance, just copied a bunch of times. It was important to me that we had a hand-painted feel for this, just as if they were going to make miniatures on a set. So oftentimes you'll see me sculpt, uh, and I'm just kind of using this messy topology, but right here, I'm modeling the base mesh. And by doing this, I don't have to read polymerize later because I'm planning ahead. And by using uh, subdivisions uh, and modeling over that and uh, working on a lower subdivision level, you can control um, how complicated your edge loops are. So right here I'm kind of going back and forth trying to keep things as simple as possible. And in modeling in quads, you can see that they're all uh, trying to stay as organized as possible. There's, uh, we don't want loops spiraling into weird directions. Um, and that really matters more for areas that are going to deform or uh, that we're going to place the seams along when we unwrap it. And you'll see what I mean by that if you're not familiar with that later in this time lapse. Um, and yeah, so you can see here I modeled the hand separately and then I joined it here. And the loops right there are kind of messy. I was just trying to attach it as simple as possible. Um, another thing about keeping quads is that when you subdivide it, if it's uh, triangles or uh, end gons, anything that isn't four sides, it's going to get kind of messy. You can see I'm doing a similar thing with the ear there, because I don't want to insert loops unnecessarily. We're trying to find the balance where we don't have extra detail in some areas uh, compared to um, other areas, and that gets complicated when you add extra uh, appendages, let's say, such as the fingers, the arms, the ears. And, uh, yeah. and here, I'm inserting loops to keep things as even as possible, because when working with subdivisions, uh, it's easy for uh, if quads are too long or, or uh, you know, just disproportionate on either sides, uh, you end up with an area that's kind of difficult to, to sculpt, uh, won't get, give you the details uh, that you want. Here I'm actually modeling color with interior geometry, which isn't always the best practice, but it was important to me that there was some occlusion on the inside of that, and that it wasn't a separate mesh, because that can get kind of messy during sculpting. Yeah, and so you can see I'm just kind of adding, adding details and going to sculpt mode to make it more natural feeling, and I quickly vertex painted some pupils on the eyes, uh, so I get a good feel for that. Uh, having the eyeballs as a separate mesh to sculpt around uh, can help with the eye placement. Right here I'm working on the details in the sweater, um, I'm just kind of masking out areas and then um, I was using the inflate filter brush on that. And I've got another sculpt video all about just breaking down every individual brush, so you can check that out. Um, and I painted a mask uh, that was tileable, and I have a video on making tileable masks as well. You can see, um, we're going to that in more detail, but that was a quick way of getting that texture so I didn't have to paint every individual texture on the sweater. Um, and the sweater um, was kind of like, required the most amount of detail out of anything else on it. It was the most high density detail, and I could have maybe used a texture for that or a that, but I wanted that to be real geometry. Right here, you, you notice I uh, kind of messed up the geometry there, um, and <laughs> I'm trying to fix that. Remove that, but then I realized 
I need to unsubdivide it. Uh, with the Malter Res modifier, I don't lose any of the details. I just go to Generate Rebuild Subdivisions, and then I can fix that uh, loop any. And you, you, when you edit the base mesh in the, the Malter Res modifier, uh, you can get these weird spikes that are really hard to, to clean up. You just have to s start at the low sub one subdivision and then smooth it out and keep doing that until your highest subdivision. So. Because of that sweater, I ended up having to go up to a five uh, for this. Yeah. Yeah. Polygroups can be helpful. Uh, you see the different colors. You can do under face, uh, face sets, actually, in the blender they're called. This polygroups is a ZBrush thing, but um, you want you want to avoid. Um, I mean, you don't. Yeah. It's helpful to have polygroups. Uh, so you can mask out those areas, so that when you're sculpting that area, it's only affecting that. Um, there's there's so many fine adjustments. Even though it's a very cartoonish face and the shapes are really simple, which makes it really elegant, um, I had to put in a lot of work to figure out exactly what those shapes were. Um, a lot of back and forth with like the placement of eyebrows and different details like that. Yeah. And when I, I actually sculpted the details on the sweater, um, at not the highest resolution, so that when I subdivided it, you can see kind of a grid uh, of the previous topology. So uh, that required some smoothing out and just yeah, cleaning up. And yeah, and I could have avoided, uh, you know, if I known I was going to go another subdivision. Um, it was important to use as many um, angles as possible. It was difficult to find. Uh, side views and front, uh, or, or back views of walls and grommet, um, but, yeah, when you do, it's, there's a lot of clarity, and, like, it's definitely making the, the head, uh, too deep, go far, too, too far back. Um, and here, the, the, t the thing about stop-motion characters is they, um, they really, uh, their facial expressions, and, the number of teeth they have and the details really vary. From, they can vary from shot to shot um, because it's constantly being touched by hand and being softened. Um, what we see uh, with uh, walls here is that the teeth uh, eventually went with something else because I figured in the shot that I eventually went with that was pretty that felt pretty different. Right here, I'm going through the process of unwrapping it, so I'm placing seams to make islands and. The, the goal here is to balance um, making maximizing the amount of UV space. That's kind of, the, I think, the priority. You don't want things to overlap, and uh, you want to minimize the number of seams, because every time there's a seam, you're doubling the amount of uh, ver geometry um, where those seams are, because they exist in multiple places on two separate islands, per se. And, um, yeah, and uh, also, uh, finally, you want to keep it organized um, and uh, well, and even, I guess. Not to mention, so um, it, what's helpful with that is using a texture. When you create a texture, you can set it to uh, a grid color uh, color map or a, um, yeah, UV uh, grid, uh, a checker, yeah. And uh, as you can see, I'm kind of judging the density of things, and I notice the the texture on the hands and the face, look, the letters look smaller, which means the UV map is actually larger, so it is, uh, oh, it's using more uh, texture resol texture space, texture resolution, and uh, yeah, so when I uh, organize everything, um, I typically like to do that. For this character, a lot of this was really unnecessary because uh, it's all solid colors, but if I were to bring this in game engine or if I wanted to add more details, paint, paint stuff on, this is how you would optimize the UV unwrapping for that. Um, I like to make my UV maps laid out in a way that's very readable. Uh, for characters, I think it makes sense to make things symmetrical. And, um, and yeah, and you'll see I do a, a slightly different take. I do a different uh, thing for uh, Gromit. Um, I'll talk about that soon. But um, a lot of things I was able to carry over with modeling, and because I was kind of familiar with um, creating the similar shapes in the character, 
Brahma was going a lot faster. And a lot of times it looks like he only has three fingers. In the shot that I have, the one that it's based on actually has um, a fourth one, but there's just like a sliver shown, and I think it's maybe sometimes he has a, a thumb on the other side of his hands. Um, but yeah, <laughs> and uh, then that's the type of thing that might vary, you know, depending on the shot, depending on the motion. Uh, yeah. There was this movie, Paranorman, and the, um, I think they 3D modeled all of the facial expressions, and then they print printed out like hundreds of different expressions at least um, to get, uh, and then would replace that from shot to shot to get all of the facial animation in the stop motion look. Um, and it was, and they all had to be hand painted too, I think. But yeah, um, uh, yeah. But there's, you know, all the different expressions have different, uh, different uh, geometry. Teeth might change, you know, like we talked about. Um, but yeah, it was so it was a lot easier when you only have three fingers to to connect the hand to the rest because there's less loops that you need to resolve. Um, like I showed you with Wallace, I separate the hand and then there's kind of a, some messy solutions there. Um, and uh, yeah, so just doing some fun, final adjustments there. Here I'm unwrapping it, and you're gonna see I. Um, once I place these scenes, I'm only going to unwrap one side of him. Uh, I hide, uh, hide the other side, and then I unwrap uh, one side. And this allows me to, um, once I symmetrize it, I'm just uh, reusing the same texture space for the other side. So I'm actually doubling the amount of resolution on my character. Um, and this is really only necessary for uh, or useful for symmetrical characters, um, like background characters, is a uh, good use for that. Um, and uh, you know, and you can do other trickery to you know overlapping UVs to for for background characters as well. But um, yeah, it's it's helpful uh, for things that are symmetrical. But as I've discussed in previous tutorials, uh, on like character likeness, you don't want to. Uh, make things symmetrical, typically. Uh, it's just something that kind of looks unnatural about that, because most people are asymmetrical as, as symmetrical as we might look, you know? So, um, and here I'm, I was <laughs> decided I'm gonna model the whole environment, so I, you know, I'm just kind of matching that image and making educated guesses on things, and then I can adjust the scale and camera angle to, to figure out how things work. And, just think about trying to imagine like the best object to start with, in that case it's the torus. Right here I'm using the radial symmetry, so where it says XYZ on the upper right of the 3D viewport, um, the drop down there's radial symmetry, which is helpful for quickly sculpting stuff like that. I didn't use the cloth tools, I sculpt all by hand because I wanted a specific look, and it ends up being more controlled when you do it that way. With the, um, yeah, with all these things, it's just little details. Um, Modeling the, I mean the handles on the, the oven are pretty important. I think in, in, in Wilson Grom because everything's handmade. I think like every detail is usually there for a reason. An artist spent time um, creating that. Um, yeah, and here I started out just trying to use uh, a noise texture to create like roughness on the oven. I wasn't fully really satisfied with how that ended up looking, um, so I. I eventually just decided to hand paint everything because I, it was important to me that everything looked at least touched by hand. Uh, just, just as, like because if you create things as close to how um, the art, the artists uh, that originally made this did things, uh, I think it'll be more successful in recreating that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. I noticed it's the same oven in the back. Sort of based on the position of the things on the table in the front and stuff in the back, I was sort of able to figure out kind of how far that stuff must be. Um, you notice I added a rake to uh, Wallace, and yeah, that's just to get him in the right position. Uh, that's just with the Rigify add-on. If you go to Edit Preferences Add-ons, uh, there's a Rigify, and and I set my transform to individual origins. If you look in the center, the the center of the top of the 3D uh, viewport. Um, 
can change the origins. And that allows you to more, move more than one finger at a time. So R once rotates it relative to view and R, R. So R twice um, uh, rotates it sort of away from you, like a gimbal, what they call that kind of rotation. And yeah, so the only procedural material I used was that light in the oven, and, uh, and that's like hardly seen in the shot. So here I'm doing the same thing with uh, grommet and yeah. Uh, and you can parent the, the chef hat with uh, uh, control P and then uh, armature and then bone, I think. And, uh, and then you, you make sure that when you go into pose mode with the armature, I, I deleted a bunch of the bones, you can kind of just uh, add and delete the bones that, that you find useful. Just pay attention to the naming, because that kind of matters uh, for organization. Um, first tail, I just extruded out a bone from the tailbone. Um, and here's some texture painting. I used jitter to quickly create some textures there. Um, didn't take the time to make any special alphas. Um, didn't think they would have uh, used any special. Maybe they would have used uh, sponges or uh, you know, brushes or some paint splatters. So that jitter is kind of a similar to the splatter. But... And here I'm taking advantage of that tiling texture, just like I did with uh, Wallace's uh, the alpha for sculpting Wallace's shirt. And uh, yeah, and that quickly. Um, and it, with things in the background, like that wall, because it's so far away, uh, the further things are from you, the, the less number of maps that you need, the, the material quality, so the, the amount of, of how reflective something is, the bump, I really didn't have to worry about that. I mean, it also happens to be blurred out in the final image, just because um, the uh, because it's a stop motion thing and it's small, the focal length is really extreme, where things are blur out very quickly. If you saw Ant-Man, maybe you no noticed that, um, that things blur out uh, a lot when uh, that went immediately when they're in the background uh, because that's just how the cam our camera lenses uh, are shaped to, to take pictures of larger things. To um, there, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure they have special cameras to, to take better pictures like that, but there's, there's still yeah, more of that that can't really be perfectly corrected. I made that egg carton, by the way, just creating a plane, and there's some loops uh, poking in it, so under face and then poke, and then, um, and then moving this, the center of those pokes down, and then simplifying it. There's the shelf with all of those uh, breads uh, instances, and then snapping tools quickly places things. And then there, yeah, there's these machines, I don't know what they do, um, I don't even know, yeah, I guess they're stirring, <laughs> Clear. yeah, I guess that's kind of obviously a stir, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know why they're shaped the way they are, how they work, but, I, mean, I, I, I guess there's clearly a spin spinner thing, but, yeah, for the texture painting on these, I just did a UV project, so, uh, from, project from view, and, um, because I, I don't care about any of the background geometry, and I know uh, that'll maximize the amount of uh, texture space and for my view, because I know I'm only using my one view. And in this case, I use some bump uh, to create uh, sort of the details and then the different material qualities. Uh, and for most of that, like it, I was able to make it work just having um, a black and white texture that I could recolor. Because I'm only uh, taking everything from those dark and light values. Yeah, here I'm cheating a little bit with the eyes because in my rig uh, I didn't rig the eyes and I just needed to put those in the exact the position that I wanted because there's a lot of nuance in the direction. Because you know, if you've ever made a drawing, if one of those people's is offset, they're gonna look cross-eyed. So um, yeah. I, you know, Wallace is a little bit cross-eyed. 